Price indices are used to monitor changes in price levels over time. The two most basic indices are the Las Pairs Index and the Pash Index. They both work by dividing expense on a specific basket of goods in the current period by how much the same basket would cost in the base period. The main difference is the quantities used. Since the Las Pairs Index uses a past period as the base year, whereas the Pash Index uses the current period as the base year with respect to a future period. In this video, we will focus on the Las Pairs Index. The graph at the top shows the quantities consumed of two goods, x1 in the horizontal axis and good x2 in the vertical axis. The lower graph shows the quantity of good x1 consumed on the horizontal axis and its price on the y-axis. Every consumer will have different indifference curves that represent bundles of goods that give them the same level of satisfaction or utility, and a budget constraint that limits their consumptions. Consider these two as the initial indifference curve and budget constraint. In this case, the point that maximizes the individual's utility subject to a budget constraint is defined at point E0, which is where the restriction curve is tangent to the utility curve. At this point, the consumer chooses to buy an initial quantity of good X1 at the initial price. This point corresponds to the point where the Marshallian and Hicksian demand curves meet. Now let's consider an increase in the price of good X1. This will mean that the restriction curve will have to be shortened along the x-axis, since a smaller quantity of the good can be bought with the same budget. As our previous indifference curve does not meet at any point with this new restriction curve, we will have to find another one that does. Our new indifference curve will be set at a lower utility level due to the increase in the price of good x1, which decreases the amount of good x1 that can be bought. The new point where the restriction line is tangent to the utility curve will be noted as E1. This new equilibrium point corresponds to the new amount of good x1 bought considering the new price. The blue colored area below the Marshallian demand curve corresponds to the consumer surplus. Now let's move the new budgetary constraint. This is done in order to understand how, the prices being in the same proportion as in the final state, hence the dark blue parallel restriction line, we would have chosen the amount of goods x1 and x2 consumed. It must be noted that this increase of the monetary restriction does not actually happen, but is used to determine the compensated variation. This means, at the new level of prices, how much is required to compensate the effect of the price increase. The compensated variation is the theoretical amount of money the individual would need to maintain their level of utility, putting them back on their original utility curve. This is equal to the area drawn between the Hicksian demand curve and the old and new price for good x1. Although this new monetary restriction curve should be the chosen one, we will see how the Las Pairs Index will overestimate this compensated variation. Following the Las Pairs Index, the restriction curve will have to move all the way until it meets the initial equilibrium, E0. However, as we can see, a higher indifference curve can now be reached using this new monetary budget reaching a new theoretical equilibrium, E3. As a result, we can see how Las Pairs Index overestimates this compensated variation. It assumes that inflation has a greater effect than it does. This can be more clearly seen in the bottom graph. The green rectangle shows the Las Pairs effect associated with this, which is greater than the compensated variation. The consumer's surplus effect, represented by the dark blue trapezoid, shows the loss of consumer surplus associated with the price variation. As we've seen, the Las Pairs Index overestimates the loss of consumer's welfare, but turns out to be useful in some cases. The Pash Index does the opposite. It underestimates the loss of consumer's welfare. However, both indices can be used as long as we're familiar with their respective flaws.